be involved doing this constantly, okay? And I'm no longer a public policy person because now I'm president-elect, and yet I keep doing these public policy things because I started doing it about a year ago. In addition to that, if anybody noticed that, I don't know who put it in. Did you put it in, Regina, about me being an author? Okay, on the fly. Possibly. No. It was very nice. Okay, and it gave me a little push there. I wrote a book about a year and a half ago, and I have another one coming out this May. But the last book was called The Journey of an Invisible Woman. And what it was about was women struggling, struggling against gender bias in society in order to maintain their rights in their professional and personal lives, which many times, not always, but many times get stepped on. So that book was where I really first started getting involved again to see what was happening, going all the way back to biblical times to today, to see what are women really experiencing. The Equal Rights Amendment, okay, all of a sudden was there. And I said, well, this is amazing because this is not just gonna help women. This is gonna help people like this and that, okay, men as well as women. It's gonna help everybody, every New Yorker. Now, many times people are getting confused with the ERA, federal ERA, and I've had people constantly say to me, you know, well, you know, that's never gonna happen. You know, it passed the deadline. It's, it's something that, you know, you've gotta have the political pull to get it passed, and it's just not gonna happen. And people have even spoken about, well, you know, I understand that the uh, archive person, all they've gotta do is let, let it get through. That's ridiculous, that's not the truth. The archive person is employed by their boss, who's the President of the United States. Now, they have a few things going on right now, okay, that we're looking at for another three and a half weeks that's gonna happen, that will decide who that's going to be, what political party it's going to be. So many things will change because of that. The chances of the ERI, the federal ERI getting touch of not very likely at this point. So it brings us back to the ERA in New York. It started, <laughs> it started as the ERA in New York, okay? And now it's called Proposition One. And I was speaking to somebody about that before. It gets me disturbed because prior to being called Proposition One, and these people had some sort of idea. They heard ERA, New York, and they thought, okay, that means it's something to do with my rights, my equal rights. But now they see the word Proposition One and they don't know what it is. And if they are like me, and I'm claiming to be very bad with this, whenever there's a presidential election, people will go and they look at that ballot and they're so into the fact of who's gonna be the new president, they very rarely flip that ballot. And I think part of the thing that we're trying to tell people to do is flip the ballot because there's something there too. And I know that I'm speaking as if this is a done deal. And I've been telling people with AUW, we're getting a lot of opposition right now to this. And I'm sure that you have a lot of questions that you're thinking about, okay? I've had some of my people in upstate New York contend with a lot of what I think are very unusual opposition statements coming out. And, you know, when I first heard about it, it was coalition, I think, to protect protect children, I think is what it was called, the group. And that group was stating things that I, I don't really know where they got it from. Because we right now do have a federal constitution. We have federal laws. And so many of those actually apply to what we're trying to do in the New York State Constitution. And I don't want to go into that at this moment because I have that in my PowerPoint. If we ever get it up there, then I'll talk to you about it. But right now, I just want to know, okay, before we actually start on this, what are your thoughts? What, are, what's, what is it you wanna know right now? I mean, you give me some ideas, so I will hold on to that for the end, for your actual questions, here we go. And I'll make sure that I haven't already answered it. Is anybody could tell me right now, like, what are you really concerned about? Or what do you wanna expand it on for this, anybody? Before we start, I'm concerned. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Vote yes for Prop 1, save abortion in New York State. 
I gave you a little bit of information about myself, okay, and I'll tell you something else that it's almost taken with this gentleman brought up the fact that we do have protections right now in New York State, a lot of protections. I lived in Dallas, Texas for 16 years. We moved away because my husband's job, and then I lived in St. Louis, Missouri for quite a while. I could not wait to get home. This is not working out. Yeah. Can you hear me anyway? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Put it down. We can hear you. Yeah. The reason that I couldn't wait to get back to New York was because I always felt completely free. I felt that my freedoms were always being respected in New York State. Now, you know, I'm hearing different things, and it's kind of disturbing to somebody like me because I spent 26 years away from New York State, and I was so anxious to get home. And now I'm finding out that we're not totally protected, okay, in New York State, and I'll show you that in a minute. Do the laws in New York State protect you against discrimination is the question. Yes, they do. They protect you. Next, next slide. However, this is a big however, they don't protect you against everything, okay? An example is the New York State Human Rights Act. It exemplifies the limitations in the scope of protections that we are getting under that particular act. It protects against discrimination, but only relating to employment, credit, public accommodations, and this is the interesting one, in non-sectarian institutions. Now, if you just look at those words, you don't pay much attention, okay? But if you are enrolled in Yeshiva University, Fordham University, St. John's University, they're not non-sectarian institutions. So that act is not going to protect their rights. It's only gonna protect them if they are in a non-sectarian institution. New York State has protections. We have laws, we have specific laws that handle certain things, which is great. However, what happens if they decide, the legislature, they want to have one of those laws repealed? Now, it's a law we're talking about. What happens is the majority of the legislature has to happen first. And then they go to whoever the governor is, okay? Now it's Governor Hochul, but whoever it is, Governor Tom, Dick, or Harry, okay? That governor just picks up the pen after it's already gone through the legislature, and with the stroke of a pen, it's repealed. The law is repealed, okay? We don't have any say in that. It changes like this. Next slide. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so enthralled with what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so the question is, so what do we do? Is there something stronger? Do we just throw our hands up in the air and give up? Okay, there certainly is something much stronger. It's the Constitution, okay? The New York State Constitution is much stronger. And the reason it's much stronger is because the governor, with the stroke of a pen, just can't repeal amendments that are in it. The amendments to the New York State Constitution require approval of both the Assembly and the Senate in two sessions, not in one session, in two sessions, okay? And after that happens, then the amendment has to be passed by a majority of the voters. Your voice will indeed be heard. It's not a simple process. So it's definitely giving you more protection. The Constitution is a democratic fortress. That's our New York State Constitution, yes. I like that image. <laughs> 
Now, so if we have this strong constitution, our constitution is so strong, okay? We're just saying, we, you know, it's not like the laws, they can't repeal things. However, the only thing we're protected against right now in the New York State Constitution is discrimination because of race, color, creed, or religion. Race, color, creed, or religion. Okay, I don't see age up there. Age discrimination, I write on that at least three times a week. I used to be good and write every day because age discrimination is the one type that people are like, shh, and it's acceptable. Okay, people laugh on television about older people. They make fun of older people. It's, it is a definite discrimination, okay, and it's not in our constitution. Disability, if you have a disability. I have a grandson who's autistic, he's five years old. The things that my daughter and her husband, who are both lawyers, had to go through in order to get the protections that he needed, he was outrageous, okay? So disability is not in our New York State Constitution now. We Six. are not protected totally against all the things that we need protection against for discrimination. The ERA, now known as Proposition 1, protects us not only, okay, because of race, color, creed, or religion, but also ethnicity, national origin, age, disability, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, pregnancy, pregnancy outcomes, and the autonomy of reproductive health care. I don't see the word abortion there. Okay? It's not in there. It's not. It's not in there. And you're absolutely correct. It's not in there. Okay? There are many, many things that are under those words. It's on the sign. I'm okay? Sure. Well, I, I'm going to go down there and see that sign because I want to see where it came it's from myself. White letter. No, I, I actually want to read it and see it so I can it's trace it back. Now, the point here is, okay, that this is a lot. We're protecting our New Yorkers, okay, against discrimination. However, is it enough just to intentionally discriminate against somebody? Well, no, okay? And this amendment is going to protect us not just about intentional discrimination, but also disparate impact. Now, how many of you know what that means, what disparate impact means? Okay, so you're shaking hands, a couple of people know, okay? I'm gonna give you an everyday example, okay? And then I'm gonna tell you about how it came about. I go into Manhattan constantly, okay? I'm sure you, you have gone to Manhattan many times too. I see construction crews all over the streets because they're ripping the city apart every time you go there. I can't remember, honestly, the last time that I saw a woman on one of those construction crews. Now, the construction industry did not say women cannot be construction workers. That would be intentional discrimination. They haven't said that. However, one of the qualifications to go and ca carry those concrete blocks, okay, you need strength. That's disparate impact, okay? The part of that job is requiring something that most women don't have. Now, how did this disparate impact concept come about? It was established in 1971 in the lawsuit Griggs versus Duke Power, which was a landmark United States Supreme Court case focused on employment discrimination. And it's a pretty interesting one, actually. The case is significant because it established the legal principle of disparate impact in employment discrimination under the Title VII uh, of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Before the Civil Rights Act, I hate reading to you, but I, this is something that I just recently <clears throat> found out about, okay? Uh, Duke Power Company in North Carolina openly discriminated against black employees restricting them to lower paying menial jobs in only one department, okay? After the passage of the Civil Rights Act, the company implemented new policies. They said, okay, you can go and get a better job, a better position. However, you require a high school diploma and passing scores on standardized tests, such as an IQ test, for transfers or promotions to higher paying positions. These requirements disproportionately excluded black workers from advancement, even though the tests and diploma were not directly related to job performance. Because at that time, blacks were less likely to have high school diplomas. So what did, what did they decide? The Supreme Court ruled in favor of Griggs, establishing the principle of disparate impact. The court held that 
employment practices that disproportionately impact a protected class, race, sex, violate Title VII of the Civil Rights Act, even if there is no implicit intent to discriminate. So these people were not saying, you know, we're discriminating, but they were making it where it was, it was discrimination, okay? Disparate impact. It had a profound impact on employment floor that established employment practices that result in unequal treatment based on race or other protected characteristics, even unintentionally could be challenged under Title VII. Okay, this is the part I always like, okay? Debunking the myths. Proposition one is not an abortion bill, as we can see, because I read to you all the other things that are in it, because an abortion bill would be an abortion bill, okay? And 10-year-old children will not be buying beer. I cannot tell you how many of my members all over New York State are, are sending me things, showing me that people are coming and talking to them, them and saying, kids will go, into a liquor store at the age of 12, and they'll buy beer, okay? They'll buy liquor if this passes, because age discrimination, okay? It's clear from the amendment wording that in addition to sex discrimination, it, it protects against gaps of discrimination in areas that have nothing to do with abortion, and that's what I was just telling you before, and the scare tactics that are being used are ridiculous, and let me tell you one of the reasons why. Federal law, okay, can't be superseded by state law or constitution. Federal law rules, okay, period. It's the end of any conversation with that. In 1984, now this is the drinking one, the National Minimum Drinking Age Act established the minimum drinking age of 21. Now what does that mean? Today, according to the research I did, I'm a big researcher, because when I write I do that, I found out that every state now has got that 21 drinking minimum, okay? But is it because they were, you know, it's a law that they were forced to? No, they simply will not get federally funded for certain things they want. Now, what state is gonna say, don't give me the money anymore, okay? Hey, what big deal is it to me if I say the minimum drinking age is 21? We'll do it too, okay? So there is a federal law, okay, that national minimum drinking age is established at the age of 21. How about smoking? These kids will be smoking at the age of 10, walking down the street. 1992, the SINAR Amendment established no sale of tobacco products to minors under the age of 18. That was an amendment to the United States Constitution. Now, anything in the United States Constitution really trumps, okay, our state laws. I shouldn't use certain words. <laughs> I didn't realize that's like saying, you know, Harris's or Trump's, no. Uh, in 1968, the Gun Control Act established the prohibition of sale of firearms to individuals under the age of 21. You have to remember, federal laws and federal constitution overrule take precedent over us. Yes, it does. Okay. So let's look at the next. No, no, let's not look at the next. I have something I want to tell them first. This I found a few days ago, this week, so I added it on paper, because I didn't want to go and change everything. This is from the New York City Bar Association, and this is probably the most important thing I could tell you. When we discuss issues in society, we always have them slightly tainted by whatever political party is involved, okay? AUW, I'm very rigid with my state organization telling them, you cannot do anything that even slightly touches on being partisan because all the time we're, we're getting approached. And I'm like, no, you can't do that, okay? Because it's partisan. Now, the New York City Bar, they're lawyers. It's an association of attorneys, okay? This is not partisan. And they have looked at Proposition 1 saying what it will do and what it will not do. And this one is probably one of the ones that I was so glad to see them come out with because I've been speaking about this constantly. It will not impact parental rights. They said it does not address parental rights, okay, which are governed by other developed areas of state and federal law. Prop 1 does not change existing law with respect to parental consent. These are attorneys, the attorney's opinions, okay? A parent's ability to be involved in decision making about health care or medical procedures for their minor children, including gender affirming care. Whoops. And I'm going to tell you something they didn't say that I've been saying to people. That's my research. Okay. The 14th Amendment due process, okay, due process clause 
It's in the 14th Amendment. It states, okay, that parental rights, parents have control over their children's religious upbringing, education, and health care. It's in the federal constitution, for goodness sakes, okay? We cannot do something that the federal constitution says we cannot do. It's as simple as that. And these attorneys, okay, didn't quote that part. I wish they did, but they also agreed. We'll not do that. Okay, how about sports teams? That's coming up all the time now. We're constantly hearing about girls are gonna play on sports teams. Now, my personal opinion when I see people in the Olympics and I'm thinking, all right, if they were a boy, change to a girl. I'm, I'm being honest here with you. I think to myself, I know my husband, I work out like a maniac, but my husband, just by virtue of him being a man, with his arms, he's stronger than me. My arms are not as strong. I could probably kill him with my legs, but not with my arms. And I look at this and I think, okay, is it fair now? We're talking about fairness now, that that happens, that we have a, a girl who was a boy who's stronger by virtue of her biology playing. I don't know if it's fair, but I know one thing, okay? Proposition one will not change current law, because we already have a law in New York State saying that boys can be on girls' teams, okay? We Transgender have girls can be on girls' yes, teams. Yes, exactly. Let's be clear, yeah, not boys. Let's be clear, okay? Transgender, okay? Okay, will not change current law respect to participation on sports teams. Proposition one prohibits discrimination on the basis of gender identity and gender expression. Prop one does not change existing law and has no explicit provision relating to participation on sports teams. It's consistent with Title IX, and people get confused about Title IX, you know? Title IX applies if you, they are giving you federal funds to run your programs, okay? And sometimes people start throwing Title IX around, not realizing there are some loopholes to Title IX. They also say here it will not impact or change the qualifications of voting. A separate part of the state, New York State Constitution, governs qualifications for voting based on citizenship status. It does not enfranchise any new classes of voters and I looked up to see where this was. It's Article 17, Section 1, okay, that provides aid for needy non-residents. That's what they're referencing in the New York State Constitution. So we either have all these things, okay, in our laws already, or they're in federal laws, or they're in the federal constitution. We are not creating things here from, from clay. So it's not quite what people are talking about out there. And again, I worry about it because things are being said, and I always say, people hate me saying it, but I say, where'd you get that information from? Give me the facts, I wanna see it in writing. I don't wanna just hear you tell me, I want it in writing with references. And then maybe I'll change my mind, but I need to know that it's got a reason. Are we like rebels without a cause here in New York State? No, we're not, okay? Actually, we're Johnny Come Lately's because 26 states already have ERA amendments in their state constitutions. We are very late to this, all right? In November 2022, Nevada adopted the nation's most inclusive ERA amendment in their state constitution to date. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, creed, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, age, disability, ancestry, or national origin. I think we may have one or two more things in there. I, ours, are, ours are much more inclusive, but if you notice, what's missing from this? Anybody reproductive notice? rights. Reproductive. Yes, reproductive rights. Uh, I think it's rather interesting because I'm gonna tell you something else. Right now there's probably, I think it's, it may be 11 states, including us, that for this time around will have in their constitutions, they're trying to get in their constitutions an ERA amendment, okay? 10 of them, all they're saying is abortion. That's it. So I think it's kind of interesting. We are we really going beyond. We're going very far in protecting New Yorkers' rights. And honestly, how do you say I don't want to protect somebody's rights, anybody's rights? You know, it's it's a very difficult thing to come out with. On January 24, 2023, the New York legislature passed what was then called the ERA New York. And we indeed can surpass Nevada in our coverage of protecting people against discrimination. Is the League of Women Voters alone in there promoting this? Absolutely not, okay? There's a group called the New Yorkers for Equal Rights that have about 200 organizations right now. Some of them are also the New York Civil Liberties Union, Planned Parenthood, NOW, uh, AUW, 
at over 200. I'm sorry. ACLU. ACLU. There's over 200. Okay. So there's a lot of lot of organizations that are now supporting this. Before I get on to this, I will say something that came out the other day, and it's from the Republican Party. One of the things they had on their flyer was that this Proposition 1, you know, most of the other things are what I've heard before, but I never heard this one before, allow the government to grant taxpayer benefits to non-citizens and give legal rights to illegal immigrants. That has not been confirmed anywhere, okay, by any attorneys anywhere as being what would happen. So I don't know why they sent this out because this is the kind of thing that could be disproven. You know, I think you're always better off not saying something that if somebody's going to check, they get you on it. And then you have that oh, bad moment in time. Okay, case studies. You know, I think when you try to explain to people why do we need the Constitution again, New York Constitution, to have this amendment in it, why? Okay, as I started out saying, because it is so much stronger than just a law as far as not being able to be easily repealed, as far as the scope that it's going to cover, it protects people against m m so many more forms of discrimination. And these are two <coughs> case studies that I thought were very interesting that I pulled up that show you how the constitution of a state is so powerful, okay, and why it's important to have things in your constitution as well as your laws. The first one is Allegheny, that's Pennsylvania, Reproductive Health Center, versus the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services. <coughs> the next one is Parker, and this one is actually a funny one, versus Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. <laughs> I like having the assistant back there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Constitution from statute, okay? The Pennsylvania Department of Human Services tried to, ex <laughs> excuse me, exclude abortion from Medicaid coverage, okay? through the Pennsylvania Control Act of 1982. That act, for all those years, okay, had been used for that reason. However, on January 29th, 2024, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and it's interesting why they threw this out, okay, and said, okay, you can't do that to the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services. It really was going on to another type of discrimination they used. Okay, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court issued a landmark opinion that abortion restrictions amount to sex-based discrimination. So it wasn't that they were saying, oh, you know, abortion, bad, good, whatever it is. No, it's sex-based discrimination, and therefore are presumptively unconstitutional under the state's Constitution Equal Rights Amendment. Justice Donahue stated in her opinion, and this is the part right here, that to treat a woman differently based on a characteristic unique to, her, unique to her sex, at least now it's still unique, women are still the ones that are getting pregnant, okay, is to treat her differently because of her sex, which triggers enforcement of our Equal Rights Amendment. The case was sent back to the lower court to apply the new standard. I love this case. <laughs> okay, this case really, I, I was reading, I was thinking, really? But, we don't understand this, okay, in suburban communities around New York State. Upstate they do, but not here, okay. In 2021, Maine voters added an amendment to their state constitution. In 2021, they created a right to food. Now keep that in mind. They put this in their state constitution. It created a right to food. The Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife said the law considered it an actual crime to hunt on Sundays. Now, in the state of Maine, there are many areas where people actually don't hunt for sport. They hunt because they have to feed their families. They hunt because maybe they don't have enough money to go to the store and get food, or they, this is the way they grew up. But they're feeding their families. They're not just going out and saying, hey, let's put on some nice clothes, you know, sporty clothes, and go kill some animals. So the Parker family was a family that hunted not for sport, but to feed their family. And they work six days a week. Parker family, I guess family, husband and wife, work six days a week. The only day they were able to go and hunt to feed their family was Sunday. So they filed a lawsuit. They lost. And then they filed an appeal. The Maine Supreme Court overturned the Superior Court's verdict. They ruled in favor of the Parkers, and the reason the right to food amendment of the Maine Constitution 
invalidates Maine's Sunday hunting law. So they directly use the Constitution, okay, to go and say, uh-uh, that we're, we're invalidating that law. It's very important. The Constitution is much stronger than our laws. Legal challenges. Now, this has not been an easy path to get here. I remember, must have been, I don't know, seven months ago, when all of a sudden we heard, oh, the thing wasn't properly, it was a procedural error. They didn't do it in time, in the right sequence, okay? The governor signed it too late or too early. I can't quite remember what it was, but all of a sudden everything stopped. And we're like, okay, no more, it's not on the ballot, okay? That was resolved. And then we came to November 17, 2023. Okay, I'm jumping backwards here for a minute. A law requiring ballot language not to exceed eighth grade reading was passed, okay? So if you have ballot language that is on a college level, you better change it. That's what the law said. So on August 5th, 2024, a lawsuit was filed against the New York Board of Elections because they, the people that filed it, two people believed that the language that's now in this amendment is very confusing to someone that say is a ninth grade person, okay? Ninth grade education wise. So. What happens with that? You think, okay, so now what are we gonna do? Because you had a law there that was saying it can't be more than an eighth grade educational level, the reading level, but now these people are filing a lawsuit for that. And the language in this was not saying abortion, okay? It didn't say LGBT. It wasn't exactly putting those words in there. So the Attorney General decided, okay, well, I can help out on this and I'll, I'll put a recommended statement there. I don't know if I took that with me or not. I think I might have. Let's see, I think I did. Maybe not, I didn't take it with me. He basically said, put the word abortion in, okay? The Court of Appeals denied the lawsuit, left the Proposition 1 on the November ballot without regard to language opposition. But the Attorney General actually recommended some language. I did have this for you because I wanted to show it to you, but I guess I didn't have it to you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, so what do we do now? I mean, it's getting very late. You know, we're almost there upon the election time. One sign that you saw was really disconcerting because I would like it not to be put, I'm sorry? It's called misinformation. I understand what you're saying. And what I'm saying to you is, it's very upsetting for me to hear it, that, that there's a sign like that out there because this is not an abortion amendment. And I have said this at meetings with hundreds of people, this is not an abortion amendment. This amendment prevents discrimination among all the things I told you. And just to reaffirm what we're talking about here, okay? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Since it doesn't allow discrimination now, against reproductive health, mm -hmm. I would think it would protect issues around, around getting termination for ectopic pregnancies if it is a medical standard mm -hmm. yes. rather than prevent it. It would presumably it allow things like a choice for abortion prior to New York State law viability. It would protect reproductive health around medical standards. Why is that not protecting abortion? I didn't say it wasn't protecting abortion. What I said was it's not specifying this is just It seems abortion. to me there is a okay. difference between specifying that it protects abortion and de facto protecting against any kind of reproductive discrimination. No, you're right. And that's what I'm saying. I'm suggesting to you that if the word was simply, instead of saying reproductive rights, Okay, we just said abortion. That would limit it to just abortion. That would limit it to That's just exactly abortion. That's exactly why we're not doing that. Go ahead, sir. That's why, the because words, we're not limiting the it. The words pregnancy outcome. Yes. Which will be, if this is approved, will be guaranteed in our state constitution. Refers to abortion. It refers to carrying a pregnancy for the full uh, term. Mm -hmm. And it also would protect anyone who has an ectopic Absolutely. or has taken one of the medications and that medication has resulted in some particular challenge 
and we'll guarantee that they can be treated in a hospital. That's right. So pregnancy outcome does include it's abortion. It's more encompassing, of course it yes. does. But the difference, well, I guess I didn't express that correctly, the difference is if I just, if there was just the word abortion there instead of pregnancy outcome, it would just be abortion. There's also was a case, and I can't recall where it was, where a woman was in a car accident, okay, and she miscarried. I mean, some places that would be suspect, you know, and they would start, you know that, cover well, that case. in the United States of America, since the Dobbs decision, about 250 women have been prosecuted, criminally oh, prosecuted, yes. Yes. Uh, because of uh, some prosecutor or police officer believing that uh, they had uh, interfered Precisely. Uh, with their Was pregnancy. there not Precisely. one case in New York in the last 20 years? where a pregnant woman, it was either a car accident or a miscarriage. I think it was a car accident. Was in saying. fact yes, yes. arrested, indicted, and at first level, I believe she was convicted and then it was overturned. I, 2013, I, 14 I, era? Could be. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't offhand uh, remember. Because abortion was still in the criminal code. That's right, that's right. And, okay, getting, right. getting back, I want to read this to you now, the actual language, but this is the important reason why they didn't use the word abortion, just abortion, and not the other things, pregnancy, pregnancy outcomes, and reproductive health care, and autonomy, because there's a lot more. There's a lot more, okay, yeah. than the one thing. And it's, a, it, you know, I always tell people when they're writing something, like I write a lot of policy, you know, if you start listing everything, okay, and you don't list something else, you have to make sure that what you're listing is encompassing everything, okay? Because otherwise, by, by listing things separately, by categorizing them, you're eliminating others. But in this case, the way they worded it, they've made sure it encompasses Well, even everything. age discrimination, it doesn't say pay discrimination because of age, or employment no, no. discrimination because of age, or healthcare discrimination because of age, or healthcare premiums because of age, mm -hmm. all of which are clearly in recent memory in the last 20 years. Age, age discrimination, discrimination encompasses there all of those. There is so much for age discrimination that we don't think about, and like I say every day, I can have a reason to write something else because there's a lot out there. I'm gonna read this to you in full so you know the actual, this is the actual <laughs> wording that was certified, okay? So we know what they came down to at the end. No person shall be denied, denied the equal protection of the laws of this state or any subdivision thereof. No person shall, because of race, color, ethnicity, national origin, age, disability, creed, or religion, or sex, including sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, pregnancy, pregnancy outcomes, and reproductive health care and autonomy be subjected to any discrimination in his or her, their civil rights by any other person or by any firm, corporation or institution or by the state or any agency or subdivision of the state pursuant to law. Nothing in this section, and this part is pretty important, people don't notice the second part of this, shall invalidate, shall invalidate or prevent the adoption of any law, regulation, program or practice that is designed to prevent or dismantle discrimination on the basis of a characteristic listed in this section. That's the important part. Nor shall any characteristic listed in this section be interpreted to interfere with, limit or deny the civil rights of any person based upon any other characteristic identified in this section. And what they're going to see when they go in, okay, they see yes, vote puts these protections in the New York State Constitution, no vote leaves these protections out of the state constitution. It's written very clearly so people know if they turn the ballot, okay, and if they even know what this is all about, okay, they, they will then have that opportunity to say yes or no. And I think we had... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you voice a third vote, yeah. Okay, I think that's it, that's it. Okay, let's talk about questions now. Any questions you have? I'm gonna sit down. Some, uh, this lady first. Can you tell me why they limited it to government agencies or not? No, it's not uh, just government agencies. It's actually, I mean, we're, we're, let me get this out again. It, I've had that question come up constantly and it came up by that large group. And we had a big discussion about that. I said, you know, if you read this closely, it's not just government agencies, okay? All right. 
I'm reading it now slowly, okay? Be subjected to any discrimination in his, her, their civil rights by any other person. It's not. I don't know where people got that idea that it was just government agencies. I, 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 I don't know because they, I was on a two hour call and I was like, why do you keep saying that, okay? Do you know why they did that? Some of the advocates yeah. in their presentations and in their paperwork have stated I know. And it I've heard it. It only to the government. I know. Which and I is said, not the case. Did you not read this? I mean, it's it's right here, okay? It doesn't make any sense. By any other person or by any firm, corporation, corporation, that's not a government agency, or institution, or by the state or any agency or subdivision of the state. I had a war about that because, as I say, this is a big group. They have a lot of money. And I kept saying, why do you keep saying that, government? It's not the case, okay? So it's not. So that should make you feel better. Yes. Is that because there are some things that only apply to the government, and so people are doing that by analogy? I'm this, sorry, I didn't hear that. This Say amends. That there, there are some laws that, that only apply to public institutions, taxpayer-funded. Yes. yes, but not this. And so by analogy, people are making that assumption, perhaps? This provision amends Article One, Section 11 mm -hmm. of our state constitution. And the language about expansive rights, in other words, the language about applying to any person, corporation, governmental agency, or subdivision thereof, is already part of okay. the, our state constitution, which interestingly enough, predates, although it's been changed many times, predates our federal constitution. Okay, so now you, you know, and the So it's a function of where it is, in our Constitution, it's already where, there. where it's being, yeah. which part of the Constitution is being amended, which suggests that it's not like the federal Constitution where you just add another number at the end. This exactly. is, in fact, adding it's language adding inside right Article the, uh, 1. The section 11. Point right. well taken. Okay, that's interesting. It is a point well taken, but again, I think that if and, uh, all you people, if you're giving any talks or if you know any of it is, you have to tell them, read it. Well, but it's even right if you read it, the issue is that it's inside Article One, which is about New Yorker rights. That's correct. It's not just added at the end. No, that's correct. Where? Yeah, but they still, you know what? They still have to read that's the words. That's probably what it is. And I think that people, you know, like to interpret it, but you can interpret sometimes. But this is black and, and white. Lawyers this is black and lawyers read white. words and come yeah, up they, with different yes, answers. We know that, don't Let's we? Start that. <laughs> <laughs> Having lawyers for husbands, yes. Okay, now, sir, what were you going to ask? That's correct. Okay. New York City passed a law that illegals can vote in local elections. That that some that permanent re, that, that 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 residents, citizen residents, can vote. You have on, to be a citizen. No, no, no. But the residents, legal residents, not not any undocumented. They have to be documented. And it went to court and it was struck down. Mm -hmm. And Eric Adams. And that was only for school board elections, I believe. Okay, but that, uh, okay. I, I, you, you know, I, again, I understand what you're saying, but very realistically speaking, yeah, this, for this Proposition 1, no, that's not what this is Those are true all over the country because people yeah. want folks who pay local taxes to have a voice in local government. That's separate from this. No, it's totally separate from this. Totally I think separate. Putting everything in a lump sum in this is really foolish because you're negating all the good this is going to do when people are not understanding that's not here, that's over there, that's not here. And what you're saying, you know, you read about it, you heard about it, I'd be interested to see the end result of that, but that has nothing to do with this. And I think that that's the important thing to remember. Proposition one is making sure you're not gonna get discriminated against for a million different things that they can discriminate each one of us here for. And I don't want to be discriminated. I'm getting older. I don't want discrimination against my age, okay? And yet it happens every day. It happens when people even say to you, you look good for your age. How, how old are you? Are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, I'm what does that 21. mean? I mean, what should I look like? And what, why do you have this conception, okay, of things like that? Any it's other questions it's here? It's to always say you're 10 years old. I know. That's exactly what <laughs> Then they'll go, then they'll go, oh, wow, wow, really? That's great. Yeah. But anyway, um, I'm going to show. Can I ask down. one other thing? Yes, you may. It seems to me the transgender on sports things is a bit moot 
because my daughter was surprised when she was considering doing competitive sports in college that she had to join the NCAA, whatever right. the hell it is. And there were other sports organizations by sport as well. And those have come out in favor of, with some eligibility qualifications wrapped around them, like you don't play for the year that you're transitioning, which is a big deal for students, that transgender can play on the teams of their uh, of, of their identity. identity. Yeah. So that's already, so, so regardless of what New York State does, if you want to play on a college team that's a, you know, that's a big deal team, you're going to have to deal with that association rules. I'm glad you brought this one up because the New York Civil and Human Rights Law it was established in 1945 stated that discrimination based on gender identity expression is prohibited. The United States Supreme Court ruled in 2020, discrimination based on gender identity or sexuality is illegal, okay? And Nassau County now, under this, is being sued, okay, because of this situation by the New York Civil Liberties Union. So it's gonna be an interesting case to see how that turns out in the end. You know, anybody know anything about that? Bless you, anybody? <laughs> Can you tell us something about that? Well, you know, I'm, uh, my name is Charles Levine. I'm Thank the chair you. of the Judiciary I already, I got the uh, insider the knowledge State State before, Assembly, yes. And it was my committee's responsibility to uh, monitor this bill and prepare the bill. Uh, so, um, Nassau County's uh, executive, uh, Bruce Blakeman, uh, took it upon himself, uh, and he has a rubber stamp uh, county legislature, uh, to get himself involved in national culture wars. We had never had an instance of any problem in Nassau County whatsoever. And so now in Nassau County, any sports team that wants to use any county facility must certify, has to affirm that everyone on that team is of the gender to which they were born. Mm -hmm. Now. Um, so that's, it's good, it was good for Bruce. Uh, he got to hold uh, President Trump's umbrella. Yes, uh, and, and by the way, uh, you can't uh, wear a mask and, even if you are immunosuppressed. Yes. And if there is any yes, kind of difficulty, no, he's got his own militia. You're excluded for religious and medical reasons, so that again is misinformation. So However, if I get stopped by a policeman, I need to have my medical records or I could still be arrested. And then it's up to the district attorney to decide whether to pursue the charges. It's going to be very interesting to watch what happens in Asso County because this is, you know, uh, again, can, you know, we say we have laws, okay? So what? I mean, really, people break them every day. They decide, I don't like that, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, and then what happens? Ultimately, it's decided by the courts. That's ultimately what happens. But when you have something in your constitution, you have a better defense when you go to the courts and they bring it up. That's why we want this stuff in the constitution, okay? Because it gives us more power, more strength. And the courts, you know, will always rule. People are gonna sue. They're gonna sue on it all the time on different things. But you wanna have your protections there. So that's all I'm saying today. Okay, and this is the last time I'm doing this on public policy. <laughs> go ahead, we'll let you say one more thing, go ahead. Yeah. about the boys and girls. Did anyone watch the Boxing Olympics? 180-pound male punched a 120-pound woman in the face and broke her nose, and she pulled out of the Olympics 23 seconds into the match. Oh, yes. How, that's, that's how do you know that that boxer was male? Because the Olympic Committee yeah, did no, extensive no. tests no. and said no. No. gender is female, no. has this always is boxed as female, and the only group that said, that called that into question, was a group that most sports don't listen to. They're not credible, and their tests, they never explained what tests they use. They didn't to do any tests. They didn't do any tests. They didn't do any tests. They didn't do any tests. The entire boxing board of the Olympic Committee has to be changed if they want to compete in LA. 
Can I ask you a question on That's this? Because I, I have not followed it because I'm very bad at anything to do with sports. I completely get blind because I don't, I don't like sports. Well, no, but I'm going to ask you a question on this. And I was thinking this when it was going on, okay? How, what are the weight differences you said? One was 100 and... It was huge. Okay, but no. 180 to 120. You said 180 to 120. What would happen, though, if it was two certified women and one was 180, the other was 120? Yeah, well, that's a big I'm curious. Now, what do they ever say? What they would have done if it was truly, and they checked her out, and it was a woman? With wrestling, it matters. And, I don't know if it matters. But with boxing. boxing, I guess it doesn't. No, it does. So, it does. And there are women that are stronger than men. So, I mean, I, I think that this is something that you know, it's a new world now, and they're going to have to resolve all these things. And how do they do it? We let the lawyers do it. Because, <coughs> quite honestly, that's why they get paid because they have to figure out how they bring this down to everyday living. And not to say, like I say, I asked my husband, who was a corporate lawyer, one question, one, about what one word was. He went, I don't know anything about that. That's constitutional law, nothing. And I said, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So they don't always know the answers either. But I think as, as we're going you know, further and further, and by the time AI takes over, this will all be irrelevant anyway. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Final question, final response, AI. <laughs> yes. Allegedly, 50% of the internet misinformation. Mm -hmm. They estimate when AI kicks in, 90%. Well, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like I'm gonna answer you on this now. now. Okay, it my like one of my sons it. works for virtual reality. He's in Thailand, right? And he sends me things. If you want to really be scared to death, okay, no. he sent me some photos the other day. I could have sworn these were photographs. Okay, of a happy family sitting at a table. It was all AI. And I have my second book is coming out next May. What men really think about women: the shocking truth. Okay, it was a survey, <laughs> and they did all uh, independent survey was done for me all over the United States, and very interesting some of the answers. But anyway, I got stuck. Okay, I have to do these blogs, and I can't draw at all. And I thought, let me check ChatGPT. Oh. Okay, click, click, click. you could tell them. I'll say to them, would you please g give me a picture? Not a picture. I don't want a picture. I want an illustration of a toxic male. Okay, you should see the illustration they drew in wow. one minute, one Scary. minute. And I took it and that wasn't plagiarism because my writing is mine, but this was an illustration. And I thought, oh my gosh. So yeah, things are gonna change, okay? And it's gonna affect all of this. Thank you all for coming. It's a gorgeous day. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.